Hey guys, how's it going? Great. How are you doing? Good, good. You know, headed into another week, June 13th. I was talking to Jordan about how it, it's 25 years since uh, I saw Panic in 1998 at Red Rocks. At Red Rocks, yeah. I was telling Brian that I was wanting to go to that show and planning to go to that show. It was after our our ski season was over, living together in, in Brack, and I was going backpacking in Europe in a month, and I just couldn't quite afford to stay in Breckenridge for that month and was bummed that I missed that that show at Red Rocks would have been my first panic show at Red Rocks. But I think also on this date, the first time I was at Red Rocks, I saw fish there in 94. I was living out. I was actually living out in Breck for the summer during college. I'll need to check, but it could be the date also. It was right around this date in 94. I think fish was their, I think maybe first or second time at Red Rocks. Did they headline Red Rocks in 1994 fish? They did. Yeah. I skied. During the day, I skied at a basin. There was like one <laughs> one trail open, and then saw fish that night at Red Rocks. And I That's remember going day. in there. It was like, you know, fish was. They were kind of. That was you know a bigger venue for them at that time. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, Trey just has this crowd. He's just he's got us by the balls. I just remember like <laughs> everybody was was just dialed in first time at red rock first time seeing fish there it was pretty cool that's pretty good i feel like the first so you know everyone has their like what's your first concert but if you're in colorado big question around the campfire what was your first red rock show so jordan you were fish after skiing a basin that's a pretty good that's hard to beat (laughs) brian what about you uh Bedspread pet picnic <laughs> back yeah, in 97. So it was, that was not only your first panic, sh- panic Red Rocks, but your first Red Rocks in general. Completely, completely. Nice. How, how about yourself? Uh, mine was the Almond Brothers in 99. And it was actually, is today's Hootie, is today Hootie's birthday, Jordan? Yes. It might have been today. No way. I think it was today because it was on Hootie's birthday. We were raft guides in training still training had finished and I went with my boyfriend Brendan and his buddies to um to see the Alma brothers yeah at it was today at Red, at Red Rocks that's crazy do you do you recall the lineup at that time of the brothers um Derek Trucks I believe was on guitar I think um gosh I'd have to look that up like- he must have been like 18 years old or so at that I'm, point. I mean, was he? I don't know. I'm 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 just guessing based on time frame, but he was playing that, with them when he was really young. Yeah, that's all plausible. Um, yeah, I you know, was Warren Haynes there yet? I don't or I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to hit the internets for that one, which yeah, I just we'll did have to look for, at that. Looking at yeah. fish, there was six eleven ninety-four. Where I remember they opened up with Wilson. It was awesome. So I don't remember what they opened with. Um, but I, you know, honestly, the show's kind of a blur, to be honest. I remember the details. And I, when I was in like, I don't know, I was probably like eight or nine or 10 or something, probably older than eight. But my friend's older brother was really into you too. And he had U2 live at Red Rocks playing in his room. And, you know, he was like a lot older than us, like six years, you know. So he seemed like this super cool older teenager guy. And just being spellbound and wanting to be there so badly. And so when I finally got to Red Rocks, it was super surreal. It's funny that you... You mentioned you too. Um, that is my first taste of Red Rocks completely in any form. Uh, it was, you know, I'm definitely a product of the MTV generation and watched a ton of MTV. And like when I, I think they, it was so Under a Blood Red Sky was that live album. And mm-hmm. 
there was a companion video to it. And I think I could be mistaken, but if you remember in the early 80s, every Saturday night on MTV, they would have a concert. It was like the Saturday night concert, MTV presents or whatever. And back before they did so much programming, they had a lot of really certainly everything in the new wave realm, you know, Thomas Dolby concerts and mm -hmm. Echo and the Bunnymen and all of that stuff. But they also just had, you know, and at the time, U2 was just kind of another new another. wave band or kind of just, you know, hitting their stride. And yeah. Um, yeah, so I think they had one of the, like, I think they had aired that as a Saturday night concert or something. But yeah, it was pretty amazing. It was it was absolutely like influential in determining that like this is how a kind of a concert should be. And then the venue itself, like you, it was just it was perfect. I hadn't seen anything like it. everything I had seen really was, you know, flashing lights inside an arena, you know? Um, yeah. So this was totally different. Very cool. And it was it was. uh yeah, it's just amazing. So eventually winding up there like 15 years later or whatever it was, was, was totally cool. Yeah, that's that's super true what you're saying. I remember watching that too. It was like, whoa, there's a concert there. Like it blew my mind too. Just thinking that you could have a concert in such a just crazy location. Like it looked like they were on Mars or something with those <laughs> with the Red Rocks. And I remember showing up yeah. to Red Rocks for the first time and there was just like, you know, it's in a park. So there's just all these hiking trails and trails you can bike on, places you can rock climb. And it's just a beautiful place to be, even if you're not being music. I mean, I used to live like 20 minutes away from, from Red Rocks Park. And a lot of times when I was just kind of stressed out in law school or just needed a break from the city or just like, you know, I'm just going to drive up to Red Rocks and just, you could just go in and walk, go into the amphitheater. You could, you know, just like walk up the steps for exercise or, you know, just go in the park or go to, there's like a cool place to hike next to Red Rocks, Matthew Winters Park. It's just very accessible being that it's a, a city park. Yeah, and what you said, Jordan, about it feeling like it was on the moon. I remember that, watching that and just being like, yeah, where, where is this? Where is this even? It's, and I saw it enough. I think her brother was this huge YouTube fan. He had all the posters and all the things. And um, <clears throat> it's cold at that show. Like you can see their breath on the fans. You can see their breath and like, it isn't just the venue. It's how the people are responding to the music. They're yeah. so into it and they're jumping and they have the flag and they're like, just so excited <laughs> to be there. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just remember being like, I want to be there. I want to be in that place. And that looks like the best time you could ever have in your whole life. <laughs> and turns out I was right. It is the best time you could have in your whole life. Seeing your favorite band at Red Rocks. It, yeah, uh, it's one of those one of those places that lives up to the hype for sure. Yeah, that it's was, a pain uh, in the ass. It is the biggest pain in the ass venue. <laughs> I and I wrote my review on Venue Llama, and that was one of the things I said is it is not easy. This is a labor of love. There is no camping. There is no like you have to drive. You cannot walk. There's no hotel nearby. If you can get a shuttle, um, and that's worth it. Even though at the time you're like, is it worth the shuttle? But you know, there's like 17 different parking lots and there's <laughs> so many different ways to enter. There's like the Ho Chi Minh trail entrance and the stairs and the ramp and the top. And it just yeah. isn't easy, but it is yeah. always worth it. For sure. Yeah. It takes some serious planning, but it's not like thinking about, you know, I saw a show, actually a widespread show and you were there Napa last summer it was the exact opposite. It was just this little space in the middle of the town where you just, you know, could walk right from a hotel or a restaurant and be there in like three minutes. You know, if you wanted to leave for some reason, if you weren't enjoying the show, you could just yeah, take off and be back in your hotel in like five minutes. But yeah, Red Rocks is a whole nother thing. You need to make sure that you have your rides planned out, that you have a rain jacket, you've got sunscreen, have enough water. Um, 
Oh yeah, yeah. the weather. Like ask anyone who was at Billy Strings a couple weeks ago. Like <laughs> we had there. a couple <laughs> years ago for Panic, we had that crazy rain weekend where Friday night, it, it, our friend Sonia described it as taking a shower with 8,000 of your closest friends. <laughs> and it was pretty right on. I mean, at the end of the show, it was raining so hard and they the played chili showers. water. They just came out and did one song encore, chili. And it was like really a really one of those clever moments where you're like, oh, you guys are funny. <laughs> like you can take a joke a little bit. Um, so they just played chili and that was that. And but it was kind of warm. It was still end of June. But in May, like a couple of weeks ago, when Billy Strings played and that Thursday night show. Um, I mean, I think it was really, really miserable and cold and it rained the entire time and, and yeah, there are no guarantees at Red Rocks. <laughs> yeah. It's no funny. Except you, that you'll you, have a good time. <laughs> you use the phrase, uh, having a shower with your 8,000 of your closest friends. And it just reminds me of how that venue is, is kind of organized the seating, like y- it's by design that it's so communal and, and that you can just kind of turn around. It, 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 when I was there, it felt like a little different. It didn't feel like, you know, you're sitting in your own total seat and like it, you're just, everyone's there together almost in a, in a section. And it was, uh, I know there are other amphitheaters like that, but I feel like when you go to Red Rocks, people are like really have very clear intentions about having a, good experience more than just I'm here for the show, you know? And um, mm-hmm. I've always felt that that like, uh, I don't know. That's again, it's part of these venues. It, it brings that out in the people. Like if, if, if it kind of uh, organically produces this communal effect, um, that's just, again, it's because of it's by design, I think. Um, and certainly, you know, of course, everybody, everybody's energy in the room or the place, but uh, it's just really interesting in that regard. I think. For sure. I think that's a big part of it. Like we talked about on the last episode when we were talking about GA, but I think Red Rocks, yeah. Like just how it kind of wraps around sort of like a, like a horseshoe. And it is, you know, if you want to meet up with your friends, it's not that hard to do it. Like one, <laughs> definitely good point to remember the, the row that you're in. At Red Rocks, because you know, when it gets dark <laughs> dark out, it can be a little tricky to find your spot, but not if you have the wherewithal to remember or jot down your your row number and like your your seat number. Um yeah, and then you can it, it's easy, it's easy to move around, which is which is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean it's you gotta easy to move you know, around, I think, because we know it. Like I think about people who are there for the first time and it's a venue that living in Colorado, it's, it's our hometown venue. I see, I've seen so many people play at Red Rocks and I know it so well now. And I know that in between set break, they're going to open up that bottom part. You could walk right in front of the stage. And I know, you know, I know how to get around, but I wonder if it's your first time. I think it's intimidating like online there I'm in a I'm in panic stream Facebook group and people are always like what are the tips for Red Rocks what should I do you know and there's the classic like bring water bring always bring a raincoat you know there's the secret bathroom you know yada 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 but you can't tell people about the secret bathroom because then (laughs) you're kind of an asshole for sure you have to find that secret bathroom (laughs) (laughs) yeah I think we're talking about it. it's not so secret anymore, but it's still kind of secret. The bathroom though. that shall not be named. Um, but like, you know, I just feel like when you're there, you're like, oh, I know where the lemonade stand is. And I know uh, it just, and the, the people who work at Red Rocks, I think, I don't know if it's just our shows that we go to as well, are like lots of happy, shiny people who are really there to have a good time. Like you said, Brian, people go there, I think so many people, it's a big destination too. I've met people over the years that are like, this is my first Red Rocks. You know, I've been seeing this band for X amount of years and this is my first time coming here. It's sort of like a pilgrimage or something. And, um, you know, I think that 
that's contagious. And the people who work there are so nice and easy and they never give you a hard time. And they're yeah. just, they feel yeah, like they're, they're, they're there with you. They're part of it for sure. Especially there was one guy, I don't know if he's still there. I think his name is Wayne, one of the security guards, but he's just always like, just getting down. Like even like during set break and people are just like, he's a spectacle. It's like become, you know, like a known entity. Like is that dude Wayne down there dancing and he just got some sick uh -huh. moves. <laughs> but it's funny too, you were talking about seeing the almonds there, which and talking about security, it just jogged in memory. I was at that show. I actually, it was sold out. And I, I don't know if I should say this on air. Hopefully Red Rocks isn't watching. But I uh, had an old ticket stub for like a Dylan concert and gave the usher like some cash and got into that show. <laughs> that that I think that, isn't there a, what's it called when you can't be prosecuted after a certain amount of time? <laughs> um statute been, of limitations statute of limitations thank you statute. you guys have both went to law school so yeah yeah i think um, i probably learned that that day and... <laughs> funny you know it's funny because once i uh so i've been to red rocks to see panic in 97 and 98 and then i moved to colorado in 2004 and then went went to went to red rocks you know as a tourist park goer whatever you know um <laughs> ran up and down the steps and then walked into that museum oh right i took my my parents were there to visit so i took them like we got to go to red rocks you know and so i took them down there and um yeah there was like i guess a, kind of a museum you know um a gallery of photos i haven't been there in, in a while but um it was it was like just walking through you know real history and um I think it's cool when the venue itself has a, you know, has a, has a sense of their own history and how they are part of, you know, the music world. And, and it, it's just very interesting. It's, it's, I don't know. There's not a lot of venues who can kind of say that, um, you know, certainly there's a handful of everyone's favorites, but they're just like, just like Madison square garden and some of these others, they're just totally, you know, woven into, you know, music history completely, um, especially live music history, and especially with so many of the bands that we we really like. Absolutely. Yeah. And it seems like almost like a rite of passage for bands, like when they first played Red Rocks, or if they play Red Rocks at all, it's like, you know, achieving this major milestone, you know? For sure. And I think like, you know, it's kind of funny because I'm not necessarily a Goose fan at all, but I'm such a fan of their ascent, you know, and I'm <laughs> like, I love watching this and I loved seeing, you know, them play, do that thing with Trey, that tour, and then just being guested everywhere and just being showcased and that the, but like, it, it, it's just very cool. And so when they played Red Rocks, I think last year was the first time they did it. Um, you know, I remember somebody shared somewhere on social, a tweet or a post from one of the goose band members sisters. And it was like, my brother's playing red rocks. I can't believe this, you know? <laughs> and like, I kind of felt like in that, like with her, I'm like, this is just too cool, you know, good for them. Um, but yeah, it is. It's absolutely like a rite of passage. It's one of those venues, like the Warfield, the Greek, you know, all that you like. It's cool watching these bands graduate up these rooms, you know, up these venues. And um, hopefully, hopefully we still have these independent venues, you know, going forward. And that's, I, I mean, that's, I think, another big part of the whole, the whole uh, equation here is that, there's something happening, you know, with, with venues in general and, and advertising and corporate interests and tax incentives on a bigger scale to manipulate funds to, you know, build and tear down the, some of these venues and they're, they're losing their history or there there's no history at all. Um, so again, like having these artists and these venues that are of, of, of value is um, you know, it's kind of defining. So yeah, I like, I think, on the site on Venue Lama is another avenue to pursue is, is the historic 
you know, show, showcasing some of the historic aspects of, of, of the bigger venues or the, you know, the ones we all, we all like and hope are going to be around forever. And Red Rocks, yeah. have you ever seen the classic photo? It's like the first people, I don't know if it was the very first concert, but it's definitely mm -hmm. like the first, I think, photographic evidence of a concert. And it was maybe in like the twenties or something. And it's these, you know, back when you had to stand real still to take the photo and um, <laughs> it's this, settlers. Have you, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have I, you I seen know this photo? About. It's really, it's four mm -hmm. people and she's wearing this big white dress and he's got the big stand up face. And the cool thing about Red Rocks is that it was here before all, all of this, before electricity and in modern society and everything. It was here just, I'm sure being used, that would be an interesting history. I don't really know the history of that, but um, it had to have been. It's such, the reason it's there is that nature put it there and we just came yeah. in. And I love how simple it still is. You know, the it's just wooden benches and, a, you know, a stage covering and it lets the rocks just shine. And I think there's like names for the different rocks. And we have friends who, went to high school in Denver um, who would like climb up there and go in, in the, in the rocks. And my husband was at the dead, saw the dead at Red Rocks in the eighties. And he was like, Oh yeah, there's all these hippies up there in those caves and, you know, people just climbing on the rocks. And, um, and I also remember fish speaking of fish at Red Rocks. Um, like I said, I was a raft guide and we had this family come and they were from Morrison. And it was sort of like this raft guide pilgrimage to go to Red Rocks to see Panic. And, uh, you know, they we'd load up in the vans. People would go down even just for the day and then come back because it's like two hours from the river. And uh, so there's there was just this whole raft guide connection to Panic. I, I think it was because they played uh, Sit and Ski. I think the Sit and Ski tour created a fan base of those skiers and boaters and you know all of that and it just stuck like every high water video I can think of has chili water in it you know and like um I just remember being on the river and people yelling to each other you gonna go to the show tonight and it was just such this fun thing but these kids we were like well we're going to Red Rocks tonight and they're like oh we live in Morrison yeah we remember when fish played we had these people camping in our yard and we didn't know where they came from and uh fish got banned for quite some time. Right. Yeah, they did. They? they did. Like after their 90, 96 shows, they were just kind of outgrew it and there was just too much, too many people. I mean, it's, you know, Morrison is, is a small town. I remember actually when I saw, when I saw fish there, my first time at Red Rocks in 94, I remember we, um, my buddy, he, he drove us or he drove to Red Rocks and he, he got a flat tire. His car broke down like in Morrison. And I remember we just ended up hopping in the back of some random dude's pickup truck, took us up to the park and just like felt so just, yeah, it was just, it was just cool. You know, like growing up in Long Island, you weren't hopping in the back of pickup trucks and going to like an awesome, <laughs> awesome music venue, you know, to see fish, especially it was, it was and I'd forgotten about that till you're talking about that, but also like how you're talking about just how it's just there, just like this natural phenomenon. Yeah, I remember when Panic, I think it was 2000, like the encore, and they played Talking Heads, City of Dreams, and those lyrics, yes. like right, right where you are standing, where dinosaurs did their dance, and it was just like, yeah, yes. yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> I love it when they play that song at Red Rocks, it's the best, especially yeah. Sunday when the encore was still when it was light out and it was like the light was starting to get soft and pink and you're walking out to your car in the sunset. And I miss that a lot with panic, how they used to do that matinee show. I don't miss having to rally so early the next day and get to the, <laughs> uh -huh. get to the lot yeah. and everything. But I do really miss that the show was that matinee. It was something For special. Sure. Yeah. We should, we should start a protest. 
Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Other people would be like, we can just sleep in a little longer. We don't have to get in line at like, you know, yeah. whatever. Dual, and dual protesters. It always had Let this feel of like, we're all just kind of exhausted, but we're still here. Yeah. And it was great. Yeah. I, I miss, I do miss that, but um, it always feels weird Sunday night. Yeah. So, but one of the coolest things um, is like one of those things where I'm like, okay, this is nice and real. Like when I was there, I think it was 97, it was 97. And like, I looked over to the big wall on my left and I see the giant node eater lights projected on, on that. And I hadn't seen that. And I was, it was, I thought it was totally epic and like such a feat. <laughs> I was like, this is great. <laughs> technology you know, yeah oh but uh lisa yeah about your point about the the whole sit and ski you know um that's absolutely i think dead on accurate and certainly uh not an accident um or it just kind of worked you know like i i there was there was significant strategy, I think, there to um, mm -hmm. to make sure that they sold out those first shows in '96, and um, you know, like the sit and ski was probably a part of that. It worked out great because they could go skiing and all of that, and be out in Colorado. And but they, yeah, I think they had already had a significant fan base in Colorado. It's like. Georgia and Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> and they knew that they could probably sell out all those mid-size or small rooms all the way there. And then that would be the same audience who would turn out in just three months or whatever it was. Yeah. Right. It was May when they did 90, 96. And, uh, yeah, and then, right. They've sold out every show since or something along those lines. Yeah. yeah something. Yeah. Silly. Yeah, it's, it was crazy. That's, that's they have the record. I mean, they hold the record. One year, um, it was the mayor made it like widespread panic day in Denver right. because it was the, I think they broke the record. And that was years ago. So I can't even imagine how how deep they are into that record at this point. Yeah, like 60, you know? 60 some odd. But it I think sells that's out in seconds. Of, yeah, it's like... Seconds, but seconds flat it's it's hard to imagine not being there and and, think, and then also i think they're colorado then they would do those two shows at the end of the summer that weren't even part of a tour like when you look when i look back on like everyday companion or whatever it's uh they are kind of standalone they're not part of summer tour and they weren't part of fall tour they just were these two summer shows mm -hmm. they did aspen buttermilk i think crested butte maybe was I don't, I don't know if Crested Butte was in that same placement, but um, they did Aspen, they did Larkspur, Keystone, um, Fiddlers, which was kind of a different story. Um, and, and then they stopped doing that. Yeah, those venues were such a, it was so different than Red Rocks, like what we were talking about, how Red Rocks, you know, is just takes so much work and effort and, and planning those other shows were just so simple you know yeah. you just pull up into some big parking lot and super casual and, and and walk in and yeah not too hard to walk up towards the stage and all that um but getting back to like red rocks and like why i think like why also like the crowds there are just you know just dialed in and so into the music and like loud and kind of rambunctious i think also just being in colorado you know i think just there's a special breed of people in colorado and just the location, just Colorado being, you know, relatively in the middle of the country, you know, where it's not hard to get to, where people can travel from the East Coast, Midwest, West Coast, and just having yeah. that combination of people like specifically traveling to go there and fired up and, and then just having that breed of people in Colorado where it's already, you know, kind of a extreme-ish adventurous group of people, it just creates, it's like the perfect mixture of people to you know just have that crowd that is just so amped and you know attentive at the shows and, and then you know there's so many live shows that you listen to and the musician is like you know just talks about that 
how great it is to be there and how beautiful it is and how awesome the crowd is. And I remember seeing Tom Petty there, like around that time, like 2000. And I've seen Tom Petty a couple other places, but it was like by far the best Tom Petty show that I saw. And it was just like, it was one of the best shows I've ever seen, period. It was like, mm -hmm. if Red Rocks had a roof, he would have torn it off. It was just so, so That's good. Sick. Such a great, great combination. Yeah. What else? Who else? Have, have you guys seen anybody else there? Lisa, it sounds like you, you saw the almost there. I think I've been at other shows there mm -hmm. with you, probably. I saw I saw Paul Simon. He's probably the one of the most iconic people I've seen there. Uh, I saw mm -hmm. David Byrne. No, he's the most iconic. David Byrne, when he did <laughs> his American Utopia or whatever that was, yeah. that was something. Yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> Um, I've seen Umphreys and Billy Strings and, um, gosh, lots of panic. Uh, um, and sometimes it's seated. It's interesting. Oh, Sturgill Simpson, actually. We saw a Sturgill Simpson show and it was so good. It was so good. He just had a four piece. It was, he had come out with uh, Sailor's Guide to Earth that had a bunch of horns and stuff. And I think he yeah. did, he toured with that lineup the year before. And then he just went back to his four piece and it was amazing. And it was another one of those, like I had on my waiter, like these boots that are like fishing boots with like waiting, like stuff on them. And it was looking like it was going to be a, a nasty. It was, we were just in the clouds the whole night, but it was cool. And it was, it was a, an amazing show. He put on. Nice. Um, I think a lot of bands like a Sturgill, I would maybe expect it to be less jamming, more just kind of stick to the playbook and play the songs. And it wasn't yeah. that at all. It was not that. So Sturgill nice. was yeah, super good. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I almost I I had tickets to Bonnie Raitt's la Bonnie Raitt last year. I sold them to a friend. I was um, go. I went on a river trip instead, but you know, and the, like you said, those people come, the artists come, they flock because they want to play it too. And um, I have been on stage. I'm not a musician, but I actually got on stage once with Ween. <laughs> I was dancing on stage with Ween uh, at the First Bank Center and it's inside. And I didn't realize, number one, how hot it is up there. It's like baking hot with the lights. And number two, you can't see anything. Like they can see, I could see the first people in the first row, maybe the people like just beyond the rail. And that was it. I couldn't see any of the people. Um, but if you're at Red Rocks and you're playing, you know, we're looking at them and we can look up around at the rocks, but they're just looking out at that view the whole time. And what a cool thing. What an amazing place to play. No wonder people want to play there during the day so they can see. And even at night, the the lights lighting everything up, it just must be such a visually cool space to be as an artist, as a musician. Totally. As a yeah. as a fan, where where like where have you guys it's it's always, you know, one of the big decisions is where to sit or stand at Red Rocks, you know, because a lot of times as great a venue as it is, the sound can be pretty spotty there especially yeah. if you're above like row 30 and it's a windy day, which is wont to happen out there. The sound can be, I remember like, like early on going there, I would sit, you know, stand that whatever up kind of high. And it was awesome because you get to see the city in the background and, you know, just whatever, just the cool scenery. But I remember like, I think it was like during diner at a panic show. And I just like wandered down like, Holy crap. This is like another, just like a whole nother dimension. You know, yeah. I think like ever since the, since that time, I always try to get I like personally, like my ideal spot is like row 20 ish, right in the center, like a little bit above the soundboard section. Yep. You can kind of see the like over the stage a little bit, but, you know, you're still like really in the in the mix. Um, yeah, that's I'm trying to like think about in like a week in a week, we're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> plan our attack there oh yeah. that's right i know it's in a week 
it's in a week and it's that's a whole thing i i do like being down low in the mix really close um i've sat in the handicap access before and that is wow like you're mm. so close so close and now they're selling those front tickets they're doing the rows two through four and you can just buy those tickets um, mm-hmm. Those are the only things that aren't GA. And I've had those a couple of times. We had that for Billy Strings and for Panic um, a couple of years ago. And that's great. Nice. But yeah, it's it's another part of it being so high maintenance, especially depending on what show you're going to. Um, you know, if it is a Panic show, if you're not in line by one o'clock, you're, you're in trouble, man. You're not going to get, you're, you're going to, if it gets windy, that sound, it, just gets taken away. So I would say, but everything has a trade-off, right? If you're up top, you do, you get to see the city. And last year I was there for Stanley Cup when the Avs won. And it was (laughs) right after a set break and people were still watching their phones. And at first I was like, what are those people doing? Why is everyone looking at their phone? And then I realized like, because I knew it was the Avs game that night and they were just, it was super close to the end. And the Avs won. And, and I'm standing and I can see everyone down below me that had their phones up, just starts hugging and celebrating. And then, cause I was up, we had been sitting lower, but I was up probably row like 35 and it just, the city just exploded in fireworks. You could see fireworks from every single quadrant of the city from right. It was really, really neat. It was so cool. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, if you're up high, then you can see the view and if you're low then the fans are more dedicated i don't know it it has uh, people have asked like i said advice what do you do and i always said get in line early one day go get in line hang out in the lot it's the best tailgating ever right if it's a sunny beautiful day it doesn't get any better you're like you're in a park yeah you're surrounded by these beautiful red rocks And you can play Frisbee. Jordan was always so good. I'd always bring the Frisbee. We'd get there early and play Frisbee in the lot. And, you know, there's t-shirts taken away. Get your t-shirts taken (laughs) away. Um, Sell your koozies or whatever. I'm sorry. Which uh, t-shirts did you have confiscated? Papa's Home t-shirts. I I, I, I want to look for my mug. I have a Papa's Home sticker. On. Hang on, let me see. Let me see if I have it. <laughs> there was, I think, you may have told Papa Smurf sleeping under a mushroom. It said that Papa Papa's Home. Um, nice. I had sent some shirts with my friends, but like Lisa, this. I think this. That was Excellent. on the shirt. It's, it was <laughs> a good like one. It. it was a good Great. one. You um, sold them at Oak Mountain, which was like at Oak Mountain. You could, I mean, you no one was. Besides the well, that, uh, cops that were <laughs> busting everybody, and uh, yeah. but the the vending, you could sell whatever you wanted, and then Red Rocks. Um, poor Jordan, it wasn't even his fault. It was our buddy Darren's fault. Yeah, it was like the one time I was pissed at a panic show. But I, it's also it's Red Rocks has changed around quite a bit because you used to be able to vend there. We used to sell peanut pasta in the lot. I remember, like at a, it was pretty funny. We were at a, I think it was like a rat dog show or some. That was Dead and Co. That was Dead and Co. with Joan Osborne. That we were, that you had the sign. I have those pictures of you. It's like the classic. (laughs) There was there was a a couple times. There was one time I was there with Darren selling pasta, peanut pasta with like pineapple on top, and it was funny because we were we ended up getting busted, but the cops came or the security or at the time came up and and I think I denied it. He's like. He's like, I see everybody walking around this lot with your pasta. <laughs> He's like, I know it's coming from here. And we, he would like <laughs> joked about how much people were enjoying it, but he shut us down. But, uh, but yeah, back in the day, there was just like, you know, kind of, yeah, there was like a shakedown there all the time, which now it's kind of, you can go and hang out and kind of like bring your own personal little party, but definitely not, definitely not the same as far as like, you know, everybody walk around selling t shirts and, and food and whatnot it definitely seems to be a different i don't know what the if it was the venue cracking down 
yeah. or what but it does seem to be a little different in that respect like it, i felt like after every show you could buy a burrito or something and now there's nothing yeah now you gotta go to well where do you go after red rocks <laughs> well if it was you know the vatnation you could still go to like fire in the mountain <laughs> we used to go to sancho's yeah know, sancho's was Highland Pacific was a spot. Uh, <laughs> we got to play some of those after shows after Red Rocks. And um, yeah. oh gosh, did you when you played the after shows, Brian? Did you like? Did you go to the show, or did you go to the show and leave early? Just not go to the show. No, at that point when I was playing, I wasn't attending uh, any shows. Um, yeah, just I just wasn't. But um, but yeah, it was great. We would get there. It was like dead you know until like midnight and then like boom everybody shows up and you know how it is you know it's just it yeah. was great everyone was pumped and just amped up they didn't even like it was so funny because i remember years ago and um i don't know i guess there are different types of folks who do this like some are really into the list and like well you know the show you know very analytical and sometimes i was in that camp about certain shows and then as i got older i really just didn't care you know i maybe i wouldn't chase songs or whatever but yeah i think that the, that certainly wasn't the vibe at the, at the red rock shows necessarily it was more of everyone just had a great time even if even if the band didn't have a good night it didn't matter mm -hmm. um and that and again like i think that is why like you know, when people say there's nothing like a Grateful Dead show, like there's probably like there's nothing like a panic show at Red Rocks, you know, and um, e no matter what it is on paper, it's always going to be a really good experience. I mean, unless something crazy happens, I just, you know, I'm thinking about the shows that I was at. I really can't remember. And, I'm, you know, sometimes I'm pretty good about it, but I can't remember a whole lot of highlights set lit wise, set list wise, you know, I just remember. Those are really good. Um, and I had a great time. But yeah. 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 The certain things that I do remember, like, you know, we're talking about the rain, how rain is a distinct possibility at every Red Rock show. Mm -hmm. like, I think it was yeah. 2000 when there was that. And then there, you know, there've been a few years where there's either like a crazy lightning show, but that one time there was just like this amazing rainbow that was just like perfectly placed, like <laughs> over the stage um nice you get there have been a few of that. those but yeah i think 2000 there was just this classic rainbow and i think 2019 that saturday i don't know what it was about that run but they were just it was it was amazing every night was so good and saturday night the sky turned pink like as the sun was setting and then there was a double pink rainbow and it was just one of those times I remember looking, talking to someone around us and they're like, we've never been here before. And we're like, this is your first time at Red Rocks. Like this pink sky, you just had a pink rainbow. It's like, there's a unicorn, like it's a fairyland when it's perfect like that. It, it can really be a fairyland. And then it can be raining. E even those shows where it was so rainy, I had a blast. And I wasn't not going to go. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as like tips for people going to Red Rocks, um, you know, like one of the big things is is the like where to park or like which entrance to go into. There's just a lot of different options. Like, you know, if you go to the upper south or lower south you're gonna have to like from lower south hike up quite a bit and get to the ramp and the ramp you know it's got its own characteristics to it and then you get in a certain part of the park like upper north like we've been going to, to upper north recently and i've i've been finding that i know like the last um like last year at red rocks they've let people up in the upper north in earlier so it was kind of easier to get better seats. Like if you go to the upper north, they were letting people in like five or 10 minutes earlier than the other entrances. I know people are it was also- It really like, annoying. <laughs> <laughs> For those of us not in upper north watching 
as you've been yeah. in line all yeah. day watching people running <laughs> in and you're like, how come they're in there and we're not? But no, I yeah. think you're right, Jordan, the, as far as tips. And the beauty of it is everyone has their favorite parking lot yeah. or their favorite yeah. place to be. But I think everybody, everybody has a lot that's their favorite. And no matter where you land, you're going to be all right, unless you have to use the shuttle. Like if you can't, if you have mobility stuff going on and you can't walk, you have to go to the upper south. Um, do, do, you, do you guys change up your routine much at this point? Or are you kind of like almost ritualistic about your approach when you when you do the when you do rocks? Well, Jordan just said that he's been going to Upper North, which was a was a little jarring was, last year. Definite routine of going to Upper yeah. South and being in the ramp. I, I think Lisa and I had we haven't argued much over the years, but there was one <laughs> year like around two thousand six or so, and like you know we'd been going to Red Rock for you know close to ten years at that point, and like you know I felt like we always ended up school side, and. Uh, for some reason, she was wanted to go to the other side, and I was just like, "No, what, I what, wanted what? to go to the center." I said, "Let's go center, let's be in okay. the center." And you were really <laughs> upset. Um, yeah, yeah Jordan and I have it. gotten in two fights. One was because I asked him to do the dishes when we lived together, and he said, <laughs> "I don't like it when people tell me what to do." And then <laughs> the other time was about where we were sitting at Red Rocks. <laughs> And in your defense, your girlfriend had kind of been on tour with you. You guys have been at Telluride and she just left. And I think you were sad. And then I was like, well, why don't we go in the center? You know, we could, you're like, I don't want to be on. And it was, you know, George, I don't want to be on George's side. I was like, no, we're on JB's side. We'd be in the middle. Come on. And Jordan went in by himself. (laughs) Very dramatic. Okay. (laughs) Um, but it's, is, I think that that's another thing about Red Rocks is if you're with a big group of people, you either need to all stick together or have a plan or just be ready to not be together. Because <laughs> I had a, I started dating a guy. Um, it was during the hiatus year. And so by the time we went to a panic show together, we'd been together for like a year. And it was really dramatic of whose friends are we going to hang out with? And you know, it feels like Jordan said, once you get in there, it's cool and you can find your people if you want to, but to try to all go in together with like oh, three yeah. different entrances and everything, yeah. you need a plan. <laughs> if you want <laughs> to have it the way you want it, you you can't just let the chips fall if you know what you want and you won't be happy if you don't get it. I think, uh, yeah, getting back to rituals, like Lisa, I think is using the same blanket that she's been using for like 20 years now to, you know, to reserve her, our space, which is a uh, Phoenix gang blanket, which at the start of the run, it's beautiful, you know, bright colors and Snoopy looks all cute. Like the end of the run, it's just nasty. It's like, I don't know, you don't even... I'm amazed that she even takes it but um so that's one <laughs> one ritual like you you know like if lisa is waiting in line gets in early and you know i we go in a little bit later it's like you know once you see the snoopy blanket you're like all right i've <laughs> i've arrived come to the right spot um but i'm trying to think of some other other rituals you know, you know lisa's we... boyfriend at the time would always have fried chicken Yep. Fried chicken. That was that crew, the boyfriend, that was their, their thing was always have fried chicken in the parking lot, like waiting for you after the show. Jordan likes that a lot. Um, uh, yeah, fried chicken and, um, you know, just, you get to bring in at least for most of like the more jammy low key shows I've been to. I don't know about like Paul Simon or whatever, if you could do that, but you can bring in a cooler with (laughs) ice and bring in sealed drinks, which is pretty amazing. I mean, not alcohol or anything, of course, but, um, (laughs) you can, you can bring in food. You, they, they let you bring in a lot of stuff like that. We have a mister for when it's hot, 
last couple of years we have not needed the mister because it has not been hot but we were there one year and this guy had like this really big industrial like carry around and then have the hose with the misting it's sort of like a you might use in your garden or something and wow. it was so hot and he was misting us and then we bought one to drive to Austin because we didn't have air conditioning. So we bought a smaller version of it, like a pump handle one. And we started bringing that to Red Rocks. So we'd always have this mister in there. And there are some years where it is just blazing, so hot. There's no, um, but, there's no like parking backups or anything, right? Like, I don't remember anything like that. I don't remember that. What do you mean? That's a like it's a good question to bring up parking because I know they say that you can't, you know, that you can't stay in a lot and they'll tow your cars. I think Lisa has been leaving her car in a lot the past couple of years, and they do not do not tow. Don't <laughs> you know use this as official advice because if your car <laughs> I don't know if car you gets to put this on Benny Lama. In your experience, <laughs> you haven't seen any towing. I you know what we have I remember a couple of years ago we saw some tow in the lot but i think it depends where you're parked like i'm i this last couple runs was like you know we just need a car in the lot so i would drive my car to the lot friday from the mountains and because really if you it's better that way anyway because if you're coming from the mountains to go to the city and then come back to red rocks is Mm -hmm. a waste of time so park the car in the lot leave a cooler leave all the things and you just have that car there and then you can just if you're in a shuttle or something getting dropped off by an uber you just bring your stuff with you and you have a place to put it so by the end of the run the car is full of like pop-up tents and chairs and coolers and Mm -hmm. you know all the things, but it's just kind of sat there, but it's parked off on the side. So I don't think they would tow you because you're not disrupting the parking for the next day. They have definitely seemed like they're just like, whatever, we know you people are here all weekend. Right. And we're just going to let you do your thing. So um, it was funny because something, <laughs> something came up in my YouTube feed the other day and it was Star Lake Amphitheater um and starlink the, like the star lake in, oh, star uh, lake. Okay. in burgesstown in pa um and the dead com- the dead and company just played there and it was the worst like seven hour backup now in 2023 like this oh. horrible horrendous grateful dead summer tour style backup from like 25 30 years ago happening because that venue is apparently just terrible and if you Uh if you had gone to venue llama actually there is a review about that so i was when i saw that clip i turned to my wife i'm like see you know i i knew about this this problem you know and um i i just can't believe that that stuff is still happening now the people were banding their cars like people missed the show oh my gosh yeah i read like a lot of people missed the show people were you know, obviously and rightfully pissed off, pissed. you know, people like, like missed it all people, together, all together, like people that had, you know, like saved money for months and like planned the trip out, you know, traveled oh, from five hours or so away, mm-hmm. you know, and just completely missed the show because of the, the traffic. And I guess they were checking like every single car, making sure that they had tickets. And yeah, it's, it, it's amazing that 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 happened. Yeah, it's and that's a bad spot. That's a bad place to get in of and out of anyway. It's kind of in the middle of, you know, nowhere um, from what I remember. And like, I was just I was just surprised that that was something that because I would look at the date. I was like, was it that was from that was from a couple of weeks, a couple of days ago. And um, yeah, it was. So, you know, wow. it's funny. You'd think that this stuff would be, you know, on lockdown at this point, but it's really not. Um But yeah, that's why I was asking, because I haven't seen that kind of stuff. Red Rocks feels really dialed with those kinds of things. You know, they're parking, they have lots of lots, there are lots of ways in, 
there are lots that will fill. So let's say you wanted to, you know, you want to park in the upper South, right at the bottom of that ramp, that lot will fill up and then they'll move you. I have gotten, I think it was a Sturgill Simpson show where um, they sent us down because we were a little late and then it messes with your timing. You know, we mm-hmm. had friends in there who were like, we have some seats for you in this GA area. And because we got routed to a different lot, it then took us probably 25 minutes longer to get into the show because mm-hmm. we had to drive a different way. I mean, Red Rocks is so involved. There's right. roads in there and it's its its own spaceship entity <laughs> of a venue, you it's, know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm trying to think like last time I was there, you know, it was really pre cell phone revolution, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. And it was, and it was different too. Like, I think when I drove in, I was with again, one, one guy and we, he had been there, he was there in 96 and I I hadn't been there. And he was just like, we're going to go here to this lot. And like, you know, it was a lot more, whatever. It was just, I don't know. I didn't have much of an agenda. I I was just, you know, whatever. And, um, it was great. I remember it being like a really fun scene in the lot, like just fun. There was, <laughs> there was, it wasn't like I was just pacing and bored and like, Oh my God, no. seven hours to the show. You know, it, it was, I was enjoying the people and that was the other thing. It was quickly like I, everybody seemed to have been in the lot that we went into. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe DG knew where he was, he was going, you know, but um it was right when we got there. People were like, hey, hey, and we already, you know, I don't know. It was just wild. But I think that yeah. there's something to be said. Like you said, we have been going to Red Rocks for so long because we live here. But I think there's a lot to be said for just letting the winds take you. You don't have to have it planned out. You don't have to know exactly which lot you're going to in order to have a good time. If you have an agenda, like I said before, if you're like, I want to be, I have to be sitting in row 15, then you need a plan. But if you are, well, if you are just your first time at Red Rocks and you're like, whatever, you're going to roll in and you're going to find a good lot and you're going to find the good people and you're going to find the fun stuff and you're going to go in the best entrance and you're going to have a great seat. And it's okay. It's okay. Because It is its own animal and it is unlike anything else. And you, yeah, sometimes I I miss the days where we didn't have to have it be such a certain way and all the things. It just seemed like it always worked out just fine without all of like the stress, but it is a stressful venue um, if you really have your mindset on something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, as long as you bring a rain jacket, a layer, some water or a bottle. Well, the nice thing about Red Rock too is like, as far as the water goes, they, you know, being that it's so high up, they realize people are going to be getting dehydrated and you know, there's not a lot of shade there, but there is, you can bring in an empty water bottle and there are ample places around the venue to fill up your water bottles, which is great. It's, it's, I wish more venues did that it's just you know you get the feeling that they're that the venue appreciates you and cares about you and (laughs) that they're that they're being smart it's not like those venues where you go in and you you know they take your cap and charge you 14 dollars for water they definitely have have that they don't do that yeah they're not gonna take your cap they let you do your thing one fun fact is they do not ever sell stickers at the merch tent at Red Rocks. Because and why is that? Stickering the rocks. Um, it's something to do with it being a park like that. They, mm-hmm. I was, I went to the merch tent once and asked if they had stickers and they said, you're not allowed to vend stickers here officially in the official merch. They will not let any artist sell stickers. So wow. don't expect to buy a sticker from the merch tent. You might find one in the lot, but you're not going to find one at the merch tent. Um, and Yeah, there's, uh, if you're in row, if you're in like row 40 and you have to go to the bathroom, it doesn't matter which way you go, you know, up, down, you're far away from the bathroom. There's no middle bathroom. Um, (laughs) The planners, some people love, like you said, the, the people that have their routines, like every year, my friends who are in the planter 
are always in the planter. <laughs> That's yeah. their spot. And Scramble Campbell, if you're going to the panic show, he's there for lots of things, but he sets up right there. I've seen him at the Humphrey shows. He's there for a bunch of stuff. He's fun to, it's fun to be there and be able to watch him while he's painting. So that's a cool little bonus. He lives in, I think he might live in like Morrison or somewhere right there. Doesn't he, Jordan? I think he lives in that tree. I think he... (laughs) That's right. Just like lets, him, lets himself down when the show is coming. It can also be distracting too if you're not wanting to watch someone painting. I mean, he's a you know, talented guy, but if you're not into the live interactive. So arts. I can't remember, but do they still have <laughs> do they have folks who are just coming to use the park on show day up until a certain time? Up until a certain time, yeah. They won't let you in beyond, like I um, have sold koozies in the parking lot um and there was a year where i just did a big loop and there's this really cool stairway if you go past the stair entrance you know like Mm -hmm. how you can enter in the steps Mm -hmm. um if you go past that in like they're walking up the road there's a really cool stairway that links up to the upper north lot so you can walk from the bottom of the parking lot up and not be inside the venue and get up to that upper north and it's a really neat little hike um and so I kind of looped from the south up that and then up into the upper north and then came down through the venue even though I was going to the show I came down through the venue um where everyone was just milling about and checking it out for the day because they weren't you know they were just tourists there Mm -hmm. and I remember seeing they were doing like a light it was the year they had like a big disco ball on the round video screen and they were like testing that out so I was kind of in there checking it out and they were doing things. Um, but then at a certain point, yeah, I think they kick everybody out and you have to. That's that's good. That's good advice though, to just wander around, check out. There's so much, so much to see. I think it's just important to, yeah, just know when the show is over, like which entrance. Where did you exit. come from? <laughs> Don't forget yeah, where you yeah, came re- from. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that. Because if you that, go at remember... the wrong exit. Yeah, you might not see your friends for, you know, another couple of days, but yeah, right down, like know where you came in, where you have to leave, know what row you're in. Mm-hmm. Try to park next to each other if you can, if you have people coming from different places, just pick the name of a lot and try to, you know, everyone's going to have better, their favorite. Or, or better yet, don't drive and <clears throat> take a lift there and, and then and reserve a shuttle, which picks you up in the, the shuttle is worth lot. it. <clears throat> Yeah. Shuttle is worth it. Shuttle is worth it. I have learned that over the years. Um, even, yeah, if you want to go get in line early, we would Uber up and just have other friends take the shuttle. If you if you care about being there early, get friends in line. If it's a GA show, send people up to the yeah. lot ahead of time that are willing to wait if you really care yeah. about that. And we're planning, like, from Venue Llama, we're going to create a list of, like, some different shuttle companies we'll need to do this soon but shuttle companies like some restaurants oh, where cool. people can go mm-hmm. before before the show i'm not sure if there's any after shows um and there obviously it's sure. not just for widespread but there'll be some other bands playing there and you know we're we're trying to come up with some resources for people so they can know yeah what, what are good bars to go to after the show that have after show parties and um yeah, it's a good place to get tacos in Denver, stuff like that. That's one of the things that I miss about um, other spots from Red Rocks. Like once you leave Red Rocks, everyone goes. And if there's an after show, you're going to see a lot of the people from the show. Or if you're going to a certain place. But, you know, like a, you were talking about Napa or even like a Milwaukee or Chicago theater or whatever, people get out of the show and then the bars that are just sort of surrounding that area, inevitably Mm -hmm. you're seeing people who are just at the show and you can talk to them about it and yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're kind of like-minded folks, but at Red Rocks, the city just swallows you back up once you head down there Mm -hmm. and you know, you could end up somewhere and no one, no one at this bar or restaurant or whatever that you ended up at knows where you've been or has any of the same 
you know, and, and that might not be a bad thing, but I always like, I love the getting out of a show and just being surrounded by people who are just there because they're your people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, nice. I'm trying to think of anything else Red Rocks related that <laughs> you need to say, right? I don't know. I Buy the poster. <laughs> Buy the poster. You're going to want it. <laughs> who's who's the uh, this year's poster? Who did it? Do we know? JT? I, I don't know. This is making me sad. This isn't like for the podcast because it's just about me, but I'm not <laughs> going this year. I'm on oh. this racing team. I'm on this like paddle racing team. And it's the same weekend and I won't be there Friday. I might be there Saturday. I should definitely be there Sunday, but like we haven't even gotten our schedule yet. So I'm not. When Lisa says she's, when Lisa said she's, when Lisa said she's not going, that means that she's <laughs> going for at least one day, maybe two, but not, maybe but two, not three. <laughs> but not all three. It's like a different thing. You know, it's not going to be, um, you're not, it's, you're not going, going. And I don't know if I'm going to go to two. Two is fine. Two is fine. But um, just going to one, I'm going to feel like I'm like the next day, I'm going to be like, I feel like I lost my keys or isn't there something I should be doing today? Shouldn't I be going back to Red Rocks? <laughs> well, I'll be streaming. <laughs> You'll be streaming. <laughs> so Jordan, I, you're, you're going to go. I'm going from, yeah, I'm going to two shows. So for me, that's going. Oh, you are. Um, nice yeah we're, jordan was yeah, just gonna going go to one uh, yeah we're, we're we're making it happen for two i did see the other night just real quick i know lisa like living in colorado i know king gizzard uh, yeah, Abby went to that. yeah yeah i'm wondering what the word is on the street i know trey was in attendance at that show saw some pictures of him and you know, the members of goose were at the show as well uh, like they didn't play with them but they were just there yeah, as spectators. Abby was there. Ask Abby. She said it was great. They're making a She's lot of waves, that. those guys. <laughs> they sure are. I mean, yeah. Yeah, this, they're playing out here in a, in a few days. Do you guys All like him? We can't go. We're, we're taking Emma to camp, so we're going to miss it. No, wait. What are you? I was asking if you like the King, King. Gizzard. <laughs> Oh, I thought you asked if, if we were going. Um, I, I, yeah. I, there's, there's so much stuff and so much of their material out there, where there's some, some of it that I really like. There's some of it not so much, but I think that there's plenty of it out there that I'm excited to. It just, it's, it's like almost like a little overwhelming. There, I just don't know mm-hmm. where to. Yeah. I don't, not that you need to start in a specific place, but um, I just haven't like really delved in yet. Sure. That's so funny because that is uh <laughs> that is that has kind of like in a way uh I don't know if the word is prevented, given me pause to dive into so many yeah. different bands. Cause I'm like, yeah, because I like to know you know so much about the band. I want to know the whole catalog about and what are these songs mm-hmm. about? Who were they? What you know, when did they write these songs? What is the significance? Why was it significant at the time? And like, you know, again, it's so funny. I think like that whole Grateful Dead kind of obsession or whatever, like forms the way I do a lot of music now, or, or you know, it kind of shaped my fanship model and now it's yeah. just like i mean not that i'm upset about it but like all right like drive-by truckers i'm still i'm still getting through that catalog you know even though i started yeah. a long time ago you know but yeah. um yeah and and but it's just so funny because like i don't know but um yeah. anyway is it, I guess that, my, I hear you. is it that you're used to knowing like everything about every song and you know the song with the first three notes and then when you go to something else you're like I feel like I should be that way. So it's, it's interesting. It's not like I feel like I feel like I'm doing the band a disservice if I don't know. Gotcha. <laughs> I feel like everything, gotcha. like in a way, like I feel like you know I should really know this. But that that's my own, you know, neuroses getting in the way of just like, hey, just listen to the music. It's probably pretty good, or just relax yeah. and yeah. enjoy. And and sometimes you know, and again, it's it's. It's just kind of funny. I think sometimes like this rabid fanship and being 
audio files and collecting and reviewing and pouring over all this stuff. And I love it, you know, but it is kind of, I see Work. now how it has <laughs> after so many years kind of shaped how mm. I, how I just approach certain things. And I, I find that even now with like film or certain like television too. Um, anyway, it's just something else. We can yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's, a, there's a certain, yeah, that's like if I wasn't on board at the very beginning, I'm, like I have to be on board at the very beginning to really. Otherwise, I'm like, oh, I've already missed that train. I don't know. I don't have the energy to keep up with <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> uh, this is, this is good fodder for another um, for another podcast. But like real quick, like yeah. what you're saying, like I saw Goose a year ago in Portland. They're playing the what the Wonder Ballroom, which is not a great venue and it's pretty small. And it was like, you know, they were booked in this venue before their their you know ascension. You know, you were talking about how you would love their light pattern or <laughs> <laughs> observing it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I just remember like going to the going to the goose show. I was like, you know what? I'm like excited to go and just like to not care about like I don't even know the names of their songs, but like just to not push put the pressure on myself to know the names of the songs or just to have any preconceptions about it. I'm just gonna go and you know, just there is such a scene around or culture around these bands and like knowing how long like ex saint stephen was or like yeah. you know i can't believe like six nine seventy seven they played terrapin after drums shit like that which is great <laughs> and it's super fun to geek out on it um but i remember like you know i'm just not gonna give a shit i don't even know the name of the song or i don't care to know but i, I know i'm enjoying it you know and it's yeah um but then inevitably, like once you then you get hooked and then it just seems to happen where you just want to know certain dates of an epic show or versions of a song. But I don't know, I've purposely like with Goose, like I don't know if it's because the still so there's also part of it that seems like part of the scene has to like people feel like, all right, you know, you have to create like a trademark logo shirt you know mm -hmm. uh, or yeah. some of it feels like a little little contrived too but i don't know it's uh definitely something to uh explore yeah I think or like it'd be good to talk about the bands that you've seen and maybe venues you could do this with venues too that you were hooked you you kind of went in with that same mentality like i don't know and then you walked away just yeah. being like wow they're amazing like yeah. um you know like, like i love Lenny Kravitz and I saw Lenny Kravitz live and I know he's like pop star this that whatever he puts on an amazing live show and I didn't That's expect cool. it I I just saw him at Horde Fest and then I saw him again yeah. once after that and he is just has great energy and the band is rocking his drummer that chick that plays his drums oh shit <laughs> she's so good and like I would never have guessed that and that would be a fun, like, I remember Sarah saying she saw Hole and like at some festival and that she became a Hole fan because they were so powerful live. Nice. That's yeah, a whole she's dressing like She is dressing like Cordy Love at work these days, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I think there's just, you know, the, the, the part of fanship, you know, any fan and obviously why the internet is just, you know, the best place in the world for fanship right is because you as a fan you do in many cases want to know every single thing about a certain piece of subject matter that's that you are you know that you like or that you identify yeah. with and and it's funny because you mentioned horde and and just this whole thing and like i remember because horde was after i it was not it was summer 92 it was after dead tour and i was like sweet horde i felt like I felt like I had the day off going to hoard, you know, like I wasn't <laughs> writing set lists down. I wasn't, I wasn't selling shit. I didn't have to get to the back to the lot after, on, you know, all that stuff. And, and, and yeah. it was just like, and I was on long Island. So I was driving there and back, you know, in one day um, yeah. it was such a pleasure and I could just sit back and I did. And it was like, I almost just sat there the whole time and it was, you know, whatever the lineup was like Colonel panic, 
Uh, everyone was there. Maybe was the, fish. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Fish headlined. Blues Traveler. When I Finn saw Doctor the horse, I saw Blues Traveler. Traveler was always there. Yep. 